Salutations Ginger League and welcome to Super Geeked where we discuss the latest news as always on all things super. Now I'm your host Susan Sutton and joining me this week as always are Andrew Downing, Kevin Tierney and today's no, and today's actually just stopped in their tracks. And I was like, I was waiting for you to do the how are you, you know, the gentle dorks, all that stuff. Like the usual, like you get you get one extra person and you're thrown out the game. <laughs> ah, shoot me, shoot me. Anyway, gentle dorks, how are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh Kev, I'll let you answer the question first. <laughs> uh, well, back to normal, tired. <laughs> hey, yes. I'm I'm a new le- I'm new one. I'm humiliated. <laughs> because I did my first Facebook Live tonight, and it was fucking awful. <laughs> oh, it was, it was the bad. worst. It was the worst thing to ever come out of the internet, and yeah, that was interesting. But anyway, enough about that. Let, let's introduce our guest. Well, some of you will know him from the Ginger Scared the Cat podcast. Others will know him from just being there. That, that is the one and only Grant Deans. Grant, how you getting on, my friend? I'm, I'm doing very well, Andrew. Um, it's a little disappointing because I can't scare you and mentally traumatise you this time. So you're safe we, for now. We are going to be talking about Werewolf by Night. Well, so, oh, yeah. oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that's why we made sure to get you on this one. No, I, I'm pretty sure that Susan... Andrew, yeah, I'm pretty sure Susan has ideas, though, of how to scare me for like any fundraising opportunities that we do. Because like, Susan is also a fellow horror fan. Yep. Yep, yep. Do you know that the first thing I would love to do to you to scare you, and it's thank not even... God you emphasized that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not <sighs> film related, although I think the scream that would come from you would have to be recorded for any future horror films. I, I will sell it, I will make a fortune. I would love wait for it, I would love to get you on a bed, a beauty <laughs> bed, that is. <laughs> and sugar your legs i used to be uh, i used to be a sugaring practitioner which is it's like waxing but it's using using uh 100 natural products but when i see people when i see men getting waxed it rips my knitting besides ripping the hair out but it rips my knitting that um to me they they don't do it properly i'm qualified i'm actually an instructor to do it i can train other people up um, but yeah, I would love to do that. And as I say, record your screen for future horror movies. Oh, in fairness, Susan, I actually did get my legs waxed for charity once. Well, uh, for, I saw that. Ki- for kids to go to Lourdes, well, and it did not break me. Oh, well, trust and... me. Is that well, why? Is that why you were constantly showing me your legs the first time we met? No, that's just because I've got strong calf definition, my friend. No, it wasn't <laughs> the calves you were showing. <laughs> I don't know what you did when I was looking at it in the like the hockey documentary box, but yeah, well, I will leave that one for another day. Anyway, Susan, you're our time right. master. Well, let's get started on the subjects for yes. today. Yes, yes, right. Well, uh, 35 years ago, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hit the screens and started a craze. Now, with talk of another movie reboot and more shows in the work, have the turtles actually run their course? Kev, once again, because you sourced the questions for this week, thank you very much. I will pass the ball over to you. What do you think? Uh, I think it's it's best to leave them in the comics now. I think there's there's been there's too much of the series and the films and the bad series and the bad films. Mm-hmm. And it's it's gonna be really hard to save it if they do do another reboot. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they thought they'd they'd hit a winner with the reboot and then it's like the second one came out and they're like oh we've we've not had a winner mm, that just sound, that summed up perfectly grant are you a turtles aficionado i i've seen a couple of the movies i've seen a couple of the shows i heard i don't know if this is confirmed yet but in the new movie or series isn't one of the brothers meant to come out as gay yeah interesting i think that i remember hearing that and going hmm that's interesting Hmm. And completely unexpected, and that's all I thought of it. Yeah, it's something I don't, I don't get why you know they have to like you know put them in like you know boxes of like you know of discussing their sexuality. They're anthropomorphized turtles. They can shag whoever they want. 
They were trying to shag Ariel or, or, or uh, April O'Neil, and she's a fucking human. So they're already going into her species. So there you go. Well, we've already got that one down. I just can't believe it's 35 years since the uh, since the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon came out. Man, yep. it, is li- it is literally as old as me. It's nuts. I just had a vision there of the, of them shagging a mermaid when you said Ariel. <laughs> That's what I thought as well. <laughs> they could possibly do that as well. What there could there's what you don't know what that's the whole point. They can do whatever they want. They are not like they're fictional characters. Let them bang whoever they want. Doesn't need to be a big deal. What as long as they're getting some, I'm quite happy. <laughs> well, it's all sea related, isn't it? Turtles and mermaids. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Well, next there'll, thing probably, do... there'll be some fan fiction out there. Yeah, there'll be some fan fiction where he's deep throating Jack Sparrow or something. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm just having a look on Rule 34. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd fit in, Grant. I knew you'd be fine. If <laughs> ever in doubt, look it up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, and always remember, clear your search history. <laughs> <laughs> well, Grant is looking up that little tidbit of information. That we'll move swiftly on to the next subject. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But but uh, funnily enough, the first word is uh, it kind of interlinks um spawn <laughs> spawn is now in full pre-production with jamie fox playing the lead role with the announcements about the cast and crew how do you think it will turn out grant have you ever been a fan of the spawn franchise and also uh, since we are talking horror could that fall into a horror film um i think that's the same with like Blade, like it's technically horror, but it's definitely going to be more action than horror. Like I saw mm. the original, and it's kind of like you know, like action with moments of horror. So I like it does technically, but I wouldn't. Mm. Um, it's got like the director's got a good track record. It's got Jamie Fox as the lead role. I'm excited to see it. Mm. In fairness, I was excited to see Jamie Foxx's Electro, so I'm holding my <laughs> cards very, very close to my chest here because he was. That wasn't his fault. It was just the script was fucking awful. But aside from that, well, and you don't make Jamie Foxx a weird blue dude. What well, if there's anybody that could pull off the original comic book costume? It was Jamie Foxx. He's one good motherfucker. He would do. He would have done it brilliantly. But no, so he decided to just shit all over him. So that's what I'm concerned about. What? Well, uh, what about you, Kev? What do you think? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I love the original one, the original mm. Spawn. Uh, it's upsetting that they couldn't get Michael J. White back as Spawn because mm. you know he's he's still you know keeping up with his, his karate yeah. and stuff, so he could easily just step back into the role, even though it was near enough twenty year or something, Somewhere, over twenty yeah. year. It was what like early nineties. Martin uh, Sheen was in it when he was uh, viable. Uh, I, I, I found, I found, I, I uh, found oh no, the, I found um. It's, oh no, I am not doing not pr- screen shares of this one. No it's, it's not hell. pretty. It's not pretty. <laughs> why? Why? Uh, why did you go down that? You have a habit of going down <laughs> your rabbit holes. Oh no! It's so no. Oh no! Uh, right, <laughs> oh, Clear your browser. We do not want to get in trouble for this. <laughs> Oh. I, I'm just going to cover up for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Oh, well, at least that wasn't a white sheet you held up there. <laughs> it's only. It's going to be white. <laughs> that's not even a turtle. That's a fox. <laughs> what is that doing? I'm so disturbed. <laughs> it's not like Susan's face is priceless. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Right, right. It, okay, it must, okay. It must be bad if. Grant is saying, oh, no, 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 him being the, the horror guy. No, it's more he's going, no, 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 that's actually a fox. You know, it's like, what did he think it was in the first place? <laughs> no, that's not the stuff I was saying, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, right, okay, we, we don't want to know. We don't want to know. <laughs> right. Uh, so, in my case with Spawn, I, mean, I, like, Spawn. I don't know, well, in my case with Spawn, I don't know enough. I know the, I know the film, the, the bad film. Wait, but it's bad, it's, it's so bad, it's good. I don't know enough about the actual character or the war what but from what I've gathered what like, you know we we hopefully will be okay but with the track record lately with everything I'm just I'm again cards close to the chest we'll see what happens 
So let's jump into the next topic before Grant goes down another disturbing hole with Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> Following a link to a link to a link to a very, very dark place. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> mm. You've been around us too long, Susan. <laughs> oh no, this was before you were born. <laughs> This makes up some weird Jeremy Kyle shit where you're revealing something that I really shouldn't know. <laughs> Did you mention a really bad name just then? Yes. That's why. That's how disturbing this could be. We don't like to well, mention that name. Well, I I think that we should have extra Freddos this week. <laughs> yeah, it's this month. We need to wait till we actually can make some money. I'm going to make money, well, honey. this is true. This is true. Anyway, moving on, with news of the reboot of The Crow, Bill Skarsgård is now playing The Crow. Is this a franchise that needs a reboot, or should it stop? Uh, I'll pass the grant with this one. Again, is that, can that class as a horror action? What, uh, what if we were doing like a superhero like horror kind of list, would you put it on it? I don't care, I just want more Bill Skarsgård in my <laughs> life. <laughs> like just put, put him in everything, make it scary. He'll it'll be great. That's that's mm. a, it. Doesn't matter. That's true. It does have a very very vivid face for horror. It's 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 brilliant. Like I think mm. isn't he in a another horror movie that comes out this year, or is it so. came out already? I can't remember. You're the horror guy. You should be telling us. <laughs> I I just, I don't have an. I, my brain don't remember good. Right, well, you're looking up that. I'll jump to Kev. Right, what do you think uh, about... Uh, the... Again, he, he, he's amazing in literally everything I've seen him in. I've never seen him in... Like, I've never seen him be bad in anything. Uh, mm. Personally, I didn't like the new It films. Uh -oh, I didn't like them. But he was spectacular as Pennywise. Did not try and copy Tim Curry, which I liked, because I was worried that they were going to get somebody in who was just going to copy what Tim Curry done. And mm. it's like, you can't copy Tim Curry. You need to do your own thing. And he did. And he was really good. But the films overall, I didn't really like them. I didn't enjoy them. Mm. That's quite interesting. Like, I, I personally don't think we should have a Crow movie. But, um, I think uh, I think there'll be a lot of kind of superstitious people that will be like oh though you're doing that film watch the guns what and all that kind of stuff they like because you know tragically that was how he passed away like on set but yeah i would i would be very i wouldn't be taking up the uh, the role I'd, my superstitions would be too much i wouldn't be able to especially with the recent thing where what happened with alec baldwin mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, tell those what well, tell those policies were sound as like there was no chance like there was like literally like 0.001% chance you can do that to yourself not a chance but, but they've got the right actor for the part it's just that it'll be about if they let them do what they're setting out to do rather than it being you know studio interference that's the thing that always worries me is studio interference yep and the, th the thing is with the first film it, it got massively successful because of what, what happened, mm -hmm. and then the second film came out. It was a different actor, and it didn't do as well. Yeah. And then they tried to do a third film, and that was a uh, Edward Furlong again. Wasn't yeah. at his best when he done it. He was needing money for drugs. He's came out and said that he's like, I, mm -hmm. I was needing money for my drugs, so they came to me with this film. I was like, I'll do that, and he done that and got his drugs. Thankfully, he's clean now. I think it's yeah. like four years or something. He's been clean now. But, well, uh, mate, continue. but uh, it's it's never had a good track record mm. since the first one. It's just been down and down and down. And yeah. I mean, it will it will be spectacular as the crow, but mm. again, it it's... all depends on the script and and yep. if they treat the character with the respect. Yeah. But do you think it like if they did do it, like should it be a continuation? Like someone that's inherited the mantle of, you know, what the the, the original crow. No, it would have to be a complete new start. Mm. It's the only way they would be able to start it again. Right. 
But who was the original crow? Bruce Brandon Lisa. Lee. That's what I thought. Yeah. How old is Bill Skars Skarsgård? He's. I have yeah. his IMDb page up right now. He is thirty-two. Thirty-two. So yeah. yeah. What? Okay, that's like. So what? Right, okay. What is the latest horror film that he's doing? Have you been able to find it, Grant? I have found it, and I have found some interesting stuff. He, uh, the movie that came out called Barbarian. I knew it was on mm -hmm. my tongue. He was also in the Eternals movie. He, is he was in... the voice of the Deviants. Yes, he is in a lot of stuff. He's in The Crow, mm -hmm. uh, the new John Wick movie. He's rumored to be Nosferatu in the Nosferatu remake. Wow. So yeah, he's he's in a lot of stuff, and all of it seems to be horror themed. Yeah, I'm oh. a little bit worried though that they're going to like you know oversaturate them. Yeah, because even though like what you've said, Grant, you've met you want more Scar Scar in your life. And yeah, he is a brilliant actor. Mm -hmm. I am just worried now that there's going to be like a big explosion of Skarsgård and then it's going to like drive him away. And then it'll be like 30 years later, he'll regenerate and come back and have a renaissance. Kind of like basically Keanu Reeves and Brendan Fraser and all that kind of stuff. Like they all just went kaboom. And then the pressure just like totally folded in on them well, and oversaturated the market with him. And then like the mental health didn't go well and it was all... Like everybody's saying, oh, well, they, what this, that, and the next thing, and all these rumors, and then finally he comes back. And like, I just hope the media don't do that to him, like, because he's such a talent. Yep. Right, next let's subject, on Susan. To, yeah, um, for Grant, for Werewolf Grant. by Night. Now, it's uh, had mostly positive reviews. How did you all feel about it? And are you looking forward to more man thing? Grant, take the wheel on this one, my friend. Um, do you want like a quick summary, or do you want like my genuine like feelings, or like? Well, like, we, we what, appreciate the honesty. Like that's kind of why we do these things. So, um, be... it's probably the best thing Marvel put out this year. Ooh, um, but that's not exactly a high bar to reach. Touche. Um, it's obviously very like classic heavy, but the CGI mm. just stands out just that little bit too much and looks just that little bit bad. Not to say it looks mm. bad, it's literally because it's black and white, like the end sequences when there's colour. Mm. Um, it, it looks fine, but in black and white, it looks it really stands out. Um, on a Marvel film, did it have a scare factor for you? No. What? No, I mean, like, in, like, like, consider the Marvel universe. Considering, like, you know, they've just done, you know, Doctor Strange, what multiverse of madness? They try to do a little bit with Sam Raimi, what to show it could do, like, you know, the PG thirteen horror, as they call it. Did it even pass that, or is it, or is it like, you know, not even like a toddler would be scared of it, aka me? Um, it's 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 cliched horror. So if you know horror movies, you're going to go into it knowing exactly what, what to expect, when to expect the scares, when to brace for the scare, basically. Mm. So like, if you've ever seen like a classic horror movie, you know exactly at what point you're going to be scared. If you're going into this having never seen a horror movie, you might get a scare or two. Mm. Um, right, well, but... Final question that I'll ask you well, um, before we go for Kevin's opinions. Susan, as we've established, is not like a superhero genre fan, but she is a horror fan. Would you think this would be like maybe one of the ideal things for Susan to watch if she was going to try and watch something horror uh, superhero esque because there's horror elements to it? Um, like what would I use? Would I use this as a stepping stone to try and get someone to watch Marvel movies? Is that yeah, what? Yeah, if you if you knew they liked if you knew they liked horror, but you wanted them to you know, like you know enjoy superhero content with you, would you use that as kind of the stepping stone to get them in, <laughs> or would you use like Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness? I would probably use that to be honest, because this is it's set in the MCU, but I think the director came out recently i was reading an article and i think he said that it is canon but they'll mm. never team up with, like it's never they're, you're not going to see these guys in kang dynasty you're not going to see them in mm. secret wars they're in that universe but they're never going to be connected to that stuff Interesting. so like even though i want more ted in my life it's not going to happen <laughs> for a very long time 
Uh, Kev, uh, have you seen Werewolf by Night? I have, yeah. Uh, thor- thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the comic accurateness of Man Thing was very well, but like you said, the CGI was very noticeable in the black and white parts. But um, I'm glad in a way that it's not going to link to any of the other things because they can do so much out with everything that's happening Mm -hmm. and just have their own things going on away from everything else that's happening. Yeah, because I saw, isn't the director, like, didn't he pitch the idea of a... Was it like a League of Monsters type? Yeah. Universe? So it's like a a multiverse within a multiverse type thing. So yeah. it's like mm-hmm. you've got your Marvel Cinematic Universe and then you can you got your monster verse underneath that. Yep. And you thought the other shit we were talking about was complicated, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can join it's... you on this wagon of because yeah. <laughs> it, it's easy enough for them to be able to do that with the, the series that they've got coming out. A uh, all the other monster things that they're going to be bringing in over the next few films and stuff that they could easily just go, right, stick them in with them. That'll work. Have Mm. a series, have a film, have two films. So Mm. I'm looking forward to how they're going to progress their story. Yeah. Very interesting. I want want to ask... um... See, uh, I sent you through that thing, Kevin, about uh, these films being pushed back. What's everyone's mm-hmm. thoughts on those? Mm. Right, Kev, what, uh, did, what did you think? I have my thoughts on it, but I always like to hear the gallery first when it comes to these type of breaking news stories. Well, I think what it is is they're waiting for Blade. They need Blade to be first because the plans that they have revolve around Blade starting it and then the other films linking in. So they can't have any of the rest of it without Blade to be where it is. So if that's mm. being pushed back, they need to push these other ones back. Mm. It seems to be it's all revolving around Blade right now. Yeah. And Grant, do you think like for like making like a unit uh like all these films that Marvel's got, do you are you worried that like they could be potentially pulling a DC here if they don't play their cards right? In, in, in what way, like... In the sense of, like, we've had... Like, Black Adam was pushed back from, like, 2018 to, like, it's coming out, like, that time of this recording this month. What mm-hmm. Do you think doing something like that could potentially have a domino effect? Or do you think the I mean, scare with COVID has kind of given that education? It, it, it's kind of a hard thing to say, because obviously, like, we're not... In the building when like, when these decisions are made we don't know why they're made like because mm. obviously like kevin was saying is that it could be because blade needs to come out first so but as we've known with like marvel before like especially with the movies that came out straight after covid like they came out in a weird sort of order like black mm. widow came out before shang chi but shang chi was made after mm-hmm. and it was like a weird sort of kind of thing so um yeah it's 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 weird that it had such a big knock-on effect especially considering they were very eager to have the two avengers movies in the same year like they seem Mm. dead set on that so the fact that they've changed that makes me think there's probably more to this and they're kind of using blade as an excuse Mm. um the last time they rearranged that many movies was because they had a worker strike Mm. So That's I true. don't know if it's happened again. I'm literally just looking up just now, and I'm I am seeing that they did have another one this year. Mm. Um, so I wonder if that's actually the reason why we're why everything's been pushed back. Maybe. Well, well, as uh, to get Susan obviously in on this as well. Like you've since you've been on, you have seen you know the DC pushbacks. You're now seeing a Marvel pushback. Do you think this could be building to the superhero fatigue that we've been worried about for so long? What, and maybe a chance for, quote-unquote, the normies to get their own back? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, because there just seems to be one thing after another. And it's, it's like you say, it's now it's both teams. And um, I think maybe they're realising that there's not as much interest or as much need for these superhero things as there once was again the oversaturation 
we we absolutely need other stuff out there mm. i know when when we've been doing street interviews and we've been asking people um in general about tv and film mm -hmm. and the majority of people are saying stop the remake oh something just fell and made me jump <laughs> hey yes was. for once it's not me that's getting the crap scared out of him and not on the correct podcast <laughs> just make sure it's not my spider yeah no, that no, that's still behind you. the spider has transferred over to susan's it's a teleporting <laughs> spider <laughs> No, no. Like I say, when we were doing the street interviews, um, mm. the majority of people were actually saying that there is an oversaturation of, of such things. But as you know, all these remakes and everything else, mm. going back to the Ninja Turtles, you know, yeah, bring it, bring out new stuff. Don't people have imaginations anymore? This, mm. this is what really gets to me. Why are they going to college and university and and studying about filmmaking and the script writing? Where are the new ideas? Pull something out that's that's completely off the wall as far mm. as I'm concerned. And maybe I, I will go and watch it. I mm. still have not watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. Good. Yes. Good. <laughs> I, I am okay with that. Just so you don't get what Game of Thrones I recently thought was like the film The English Patient. Very, very long and then ends in extreme disappointment. So yeah, that's but, my but I, I, that's my very short Game of Thrones analysis right there. <laughs> well, I do, I do it, like I said the other week, I, I do admit to uh, being forced to watch the first episode of House of the Dragon. And well, that, well, we all know I suppose why. Some people, <laughs> I suppose some people might say it's a bit horror, but, you know, when I saw the cesarean scene, I thought, well, no, that's just a bit OTT. And it didn't mm. bother me at all. The only thing that really, really bothered me was the, the Lance being put in front of the um, galloping horse. But mm. I've spoken to a props friend of ours, mutual friend, who yep. said, don't worry, it was the just balsa was wood in the in the, the lance and it wasn't real, uh, yeah. real horse's legs. Yeah. But the yeah, give, give me saw or hostel or anything like that. <laughs> I will watch that and I will lap it up. I well, love it. <laughs> wait until you watch the, the episode that will be coming out, I believe. I think it's on how is it uh was it in start of November, Grant? When you talk oh, about the, the most disturbing films. Well, well we by the end you of it, up a list. Uh, I looked up a I list said if they were actually and you disturbing. just like either said no, this ain't disturbing, or it was like so disturbing that it gave you PTSD. Like <laughs> like Grant gets so bad by the end of it, we had to record a uh, trigger warning for the start. <laughs> what because what because it what it, what it sent him down a dark hole when I was like, okay, we need to stop right now. <laughs> Give me a second. Have you seen human... uh, Sorry, I, I was gonna say have you seen human caterpillar yet? Human centipede? Uh, yeah. Uh, human, rule yeah, thirty four human centipede. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the like so, some of the films well, that he was talking about on it was like I was like Jesus Christ, and then <laughs> I didn't realize there's there's a thing is it called the hor the horror iceberg was it called? Yes, yes, the horror yes, iceberg. It's the, basically, the like, disturbing the further movie down, iceberg. Yeah, the further down you go in the iceberg, like the more disturbing films you get. The ones that gave him PTSD had just like just caressed the top of the water. <laughs> there was worse under there, and I was like, oh my god. If a seasoned veteran like Grant, who is like horror fanatic, <laughs> what, was curling up in a ball at one of these entries, I ain't going near <laughs> that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Not at Which all. Which one was making you curl up in a ball then? Uh, you'll find out if you watch the episode on uh, November. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, I, just just, wanted, um... I just wanted to be able to say, no, I've seen that and that was fine. Oh, if <laughs> oh, you no, watch like, it, you'll there's, find out. there's like the ones that are like, you, like first levels like your generic horror second levels maybe like your torture porn egg your third levels like your um serbian film that type thing and then after that it just it just becomes snuff <laughs> like oh. not even like it, the ones at the very bottom is like illegal to own type thing like you will be arrested <laughs> if you're found in possession of these movies yeah. wow it's 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 a dark shit i'm learning very very disturbing things from Graham. And speaking I'm so Grant, happy. Yes. Well, uh, and speaking of which, since this is one that will be going out tomorrow, what we can make a little announcement, if you want, Grant, about a certain thing that I'll be going to on Friday. 
Oh, yes. Um, me and Andrew and a couple of other people are participating in the Glasgow 48-hour film challenge where we will be making a movie of a random <laughs> genre over the weekend. And I <laughs> promise yeah, I've done Andrew... That. I promise Andrew will leave unharmed. You will leave so tired. It is exhausting. And you had better make sure that you get that stuff into Edinburgh straight away. Glasgow. Is it the Edinburgh one you're doing? It's the Glasgow. I've done the, the Edinburgh one earlier this year. Right. And we met, we we... met during the, because uh, I wanted to be in the Edinburgh one, but I arsed up my dates and it was the dates that I had, uh, I couldn't get out of childcare. Well, I thought it was like the following weekend. So I felt so bad about it that I was like, right, Grant, I want to make up to you. Like, come on my podcast, let me talk about your journey as a filmmaker, promote the 48-hour film festival, and what you've done. And like with the rest of everybody here, the ginger herpes, what you just, <laughs> I caught you, you're stuck with me. Weird that in this light, my hair actually looks like it is becoming ginger, and I'm really unhappy about that. You will never be ginger. <laughs> never. Did you just say that you're unhappy about that? No, that you'd be happy. <laughs> Did you say happy or unhappy? I said unhappy. I don't want to be ginger. Yeah, prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather shave my head bald than be ginger. I have shaved my head bald. That and almost got me a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I was so bad wow. though the way you did that though, Susan, like that. It was like you're massaging Kevin's head with those nails. <laughs> just from my angle on the camera. Oh my God. Oh, no, hurt. I I will not be massaging his unginger head, thing as he doesn't want it to be. Mm. No, it was it was it was Kevin's one, not Grant. It was Kevin. Well, Everyone's in sure. like different positions from each other. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's great. Well, from... Like if I look straight down, I'm just saying hello to Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey. hey. If I look down, I'm looking at you. If I look that way, I'm looking at Andrew. <laughs> that way, I'm looking at Susan. Yeah. Well, in my case, like uh, this is going to sound really bad, but below me is Grant. Well, and to, uh, to the bottom corner that I can never figure this out I'm really depth perception like down that way <laughs> that's Kevin yeah. I know but this way it's Susan and down there that's, that's Grant. Grant to me <laughs> that's Kevin and that's you I know it's going to be so difficult when you do your tagline to sign off and you'll be like right, uh, what, uh, which way am I doing it and I'm like right, just, just, I'll be like, just say the words for this one we're not used to having four it's okay. <laughs> no pointing today. Yeah, you should be honoured, Grant. You're the first one to come on that's, that's made this like a quartet. Ooh, I'm a fourth <laughs> wheel, not a third You're... for a change. Hey, <laughs> you've officially became an actual car rather than Robin Reliant. Well, only people, only people of a certain age will get that. <laughs> yes, yes, me, me. <laughs> But that's it for this show. Now, hopefully, again, that's given viewers all something to think about and talk about. So until next time, I'm not pointing. He's he's super. No, he's super. He's super. Right, don't, I'm pointing. Don't do, don't do anything. <laughs> I'll give you a moment to compose yourself. And what we'll do, because Grant is the guest, Grant, where can our audience find you well, on any of your socials? Oh, Jump God. <laughs> um. I am Scottish21, basically everywhere on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. Fair enough. Right, Susan, you've had your composure. You've had your time. Take it away. Well, that's it for this show. Hopefully that's given all the viewers something to think and talk about. So until next time, Kevin Super, Andrew's Ginger. Grant's not ginger and doesn't want to be. And I've been your host, Susan Sutton. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.